Welcome everyone to my Atlas flip to TGFU, seventh grade volleyball lesson. Atlas reflection. What was the overall objective of the lesson? The overall objective was a skills related lesson on how to perform a set pass in volleyball by absorbing force to propel the ball to a teammate. Comment on the overall development appropriateness of the objective or task for the grade level. So according to the Shape America standards, standard one, students should be able to perform two pinup volleys with control in a dynamic environment. And standard two, students should be able to select offensive shots based on opponent's location. Hit where the opponent is not. So according to the standards, the students in this particular class should have already developed the bump pass, the underhand shot, and the set pass, the overhand shot, um, in earlier grades. Therefore, they should be able to participate in small-sided games in the seventh grade. <clears throat> Flip to TGFU, a constructivist approach. In this lesson, there was no problem solving involved as it was a teacher-directed approach. The teacher stood in front of the class. She explained what skill they were working on for the day. And then the students paired up or worked in fours to work on that particular skill, skill, which was the set pass. So the skill of the set pass was not taught in context to the actual game of volleyball. The tactical goal of the set is to optimize your hitter's ability to hit an unplayable ball onto the opponent's side of the court. This example lesson did not allow the students to utilize the skill within a game's context. This makes transfer of skill from practice to game difficult to understand. So when you're not in that environment of the game and you, you might not know when is the appropriate time to utilize that skill. There's plenty of space in the gym to lay out multiple courts with or without nets for students to practice to set or bump in a small sided game. Now, as a teacher, as you're watching your students play these small-sided games, it's up to you whether the developmental level is appropriate for a net or not. In my particular situation, uh, I would probably start the students out with maybe lower level nets, like a nitro ball or just tape or cones to represent the net. Learning is multi-dimensional. The teacher should offer a variety of choices to support the learner's individual knowledge base. What is the skill? The skill is setting to a teammate. To be able to set successfully, students have to absorb the force of the ball using their fingertips to propel the ball to a teammate. The ability to absorb force and propel an object can be utilized in games within the net and wall sports category, as well as in striking fielding games and invasion games. The skill of propelling an object can be seen in target games. So another example where this might cross into a game category, propelling a object could be in, in hockey where a teammate is passing the puck to another teammate, you have to be able to propel the puck across the ice, and the teammate would have to be able to absorb the puck on their stick to control it. The flip objective of the lesson is to set up in an offensive attack by using a set or bump pass to a teammate. Problem solving game, game number one, the setup. Using a balloon, beach ball, or soft volleyball, players participate in 2v2 short court volleyball games. Students discuss the kind of ball they want to play with. Uh, this brings in the democratic process 
kind of based on everybody's ability level in the, uh, the group. So the group has success playing the game. Teams play rock, paper, scissors. The best of three that determine who serves first. This is always an issue in my class. Who's going to serve first? You say, Coach Eric, why did you allow the other team to serve first? So this just uh, mitigates that issue. Teams must stay within their court. If the ball goes out of bounds into another court, wait for a natural break in that game. And either you or someone from that game can return your ball uh, so it's safe. The goal of the game is to have the most points at the end of five minutes. Play begins with serving team using a free ball toss. After a point is awarded, teams will alternate the free toss. So there will be no serving in this game, uh, focusing on just the set and the bump to the opponent's side of the court. Conditions, teams must complete two passes before volleying over the net. One point is awarded if the ball is unsuccessfully played by, other, by either team. Things to think about is how you will position yourself to help your teammates out. The question and answer, the discussion. So after a small-sided game, I would pull the group in and ask what was the goal of the game? Answer to be the team with the most points. What strategies did you use to pass the ball to your teammate? Use a set or pump pass. What type of position should you be in to set a good pass? You should be in an athletic position ready to pass the ball to a teammate. Now that athletic position, uh, I call it the universal athletic position because regardless of what sport you play, you kind of always start out with your feet uh, parallel or slightly staggered, uh, ready to move in all directions. Where should you move after a pass? to the base position, so your starting position. How does communication, verbal or nonverbal, help with passing? It allows teammates to know who you are passing it to. In my classes, this is always an issue, a uh, communication issue uh, in games. So I'm always emphasizing these verbal and nonverbal communication cues because these will happen outside of the gym doors as well in the classroom. In the community, you're going to have to read verbal and nonverbal cues, which are, are skills that my particular students have to build. Is it more risky to set the ball closer or further away from the net when attempting to hit to the opponent's side? It is riskier to set the ball further away from the net. Easier shots occur when you are closer to the net. Um, so a lot of mistakes might happen the further you are away. You can hit the ball out of bounds, uh, hit the ball into your own side, hit the ball into the net. Uh, so being closer allows you to maximize your opportunity to hit the ball over. What does team success look like? Everyone is working together and having fun. I think that's the most, one of the most important things in PE is that collaboration. People are working together uh, and having fun for the overall enjoyment of the activity. <clears throat> Contextual practice directions. Players form a triad to practice the set pass. One person is the tosser, one person is the passer, and one person is the setter. The tosser will pass a playable ball to the passer who passes it to the setter. Now that pass is either a set pass or a bump pass, depending on the height of the ball. If the ball is overhead, you want to utilize the set pass. If it's a lower pass, you want to use the bump pass and hit the ball in an upward fashion. The setter will catch the ball and then roll it back to the tosser. After three trials, the students will rotate positions. Teaching task. Remind students to be in a good base position so they can move quickly in all directions. 
I would demonstrate what a good base position looks like. Or I would have a, another student demonstrate what a good base position looks like. And students should also be aware of those verbal and nonverbal cues, eye contact or saying um, their teammate's name. Extensions and refinements to the activity. Students can move further away from each other to make it more challenging. Triads can attempt continuous passes so they can try to set uh, personal team records by passing it continuously. The tosser can toss the ball at different levels and directions and have students rotate to a new spot while the ball is in midair. Refinements. Students can use a modified ball, such as a balloon or a beach ball. Students move closer, and after three successful passes, they can take one step back. Also, students can begin in a kneeling position and allow the ball to bounce before bumping or setting it. So this is the practice diagram. This is how uh, my gym is particularly laid out. It's a small gym. It is 60 feet in length and about 30 feet in width. So I do not have a lot of space to make multiple courts. And the multiple courts I do make are very, very small, uh, typically in this quadrant fashion that you see right here. So in triads, you have the tosser, who tosses it to the passer, and the passer who either catches it or uses a set or bump goes back to the tosser. And you can do this in multiple quadrants. Now, if you have a bigger class, uh, let's say upwards of 30 students, you might have to, well, you're probably definitely going to have to uh, change your approach to court setup. But in my particular situation, my largest groups are nine kids in a class, and my smallest groups might be three kids in a class, uh, sometimes even smaller than that. So I used to, I have to jump in or have to utilize my instructional aids to help out as well in the class. The overhead set pass cues. So when you do the set pass, your elbow should be nice and high. You should make a diamond with your hands using your thumbs in your index fingers, bend your knees. There should be a quick catch and push with the fingertips. So you're not actually catching and absorbing the ball. It's just with the fingertips. Extend your arms and wrists and pretend you're catching a water balloon to help you get the feel of not stabbing the ball. And I got some of these cues from pecentral.org. The bump pass is the underhand pass cues. So you want to make a flat surface with your hands by making a fist and placing it in the other. So you want to cup your hands together with your thumbs on top. Your thumbs should not be interlaced. They should be parallel to each other. It's a common mistake I see um, in volleyball. Position yourself to get under the ball. Your feet are parallel or slightly staggered with your knees bent that universal athletic position that I previously spoke about. Extend from your ankles, knees, and hips as if you were going to jump to spike the ball. Do not allow your arms to swing. Your arms should be stiff as a board when the ball makes contact. A lot of times I see an overswing using your arms and the ball will go in uh, all types of directions. Aim the arms to the top of the net, not to the ceiling. So it's kind of more of a curved linear arc it should take rather than a straight up linear arc. Application game, game number two. So set up the same as game number one. The goal of the game is the same. However, teams are on one point for each successful pass to a teammate before hitting it over the net. Uh, so I thought it would be a good idea to add this particular rule and to put emphasis on uh, working together as a team so everybody is enjoying the game. 
and remind players that passes should be toward the net to increase the chance of a more accurate shot onto the opponent's court. Closure, questions, and answers. Why is being in an athletic stance important in volleyball? The ability to move to any direction. What do we need to do? What do we need to do when passing the ball? We need to communicate using verbal or non-verbal communication skills. What is more risky to shoot onto your opponent's court or farther away or closer? You want to be closer to increase the success of your shot. And what is the best time to hit the ball over the net on the third pass from a teammate? And the big question, why are both verbal and nonverbal communication skills important in the game of volleyball? And uh, I actually just mentioned that in the third question. So the reference is from the Mitchell, Oslin, and Griffin book, Volleyball Lesson 1, pages 406 to 408. 